The Komuso. Who were the Komuso? Enlightened flute-playing monks, ex-samurai spies, or hidden Christians walking among a den of wolves throughout Edo period Japan. Today, we are going to be examining these mysterious figures. The topic of the Komuso is a bit of a lesser-known element of Japanese history, yet with us now entering into the Edo period in the main series for the channel, I think this topic fits perfectly, being that the Komuso seem to have really risen to prominence during this time. No doubt, just by looking at them, they give off a unique aura of mystery. Who are they? What do they do? What do they want? All questions with complex and fascinating answers we will be getting into here today. However, I cannot do this alone. Instead, I am happy to be joined by Renzo from Renzo Flutes and Nick from Honan Shakuhachi to help me pull the basket off of these wandering medicants. It is they who have really put in the time and effort of researching this topic and who have come forth to get this video made, writing out much of the information we are about to present to you here. Yet, before we talk about the Komuso, we should look at their roots. Let's go way back. Back to the beginning. The beginning of the universe. Many origin stories suggest that the universe began with a certain sound, word, or vibration. Or even in the case of Japanese mythology, music to appease the great Amaterasu, to woo her out of her cave to bring light once again. As such, ancient music theory saw the vibrations of strings, flutes, and voices to be playing an integral part in the workings of creation, a metaphysical bridge from the known to the unknown. Let it be on earth as it is in heaven. This was a goal of ancient music. In Japan, musicians often had some sort of spirituality. Blind priests would play the biwa to ward off evil spirits. Some played music for simply collecting some extra change, and others for alms. Wandering monks would carry straw mats on their backs, periodically unrolling them to play. Presumably the hitoyogiri, flute, and or the shakuhachi. These were the komoso, straw hat monks. The komuso, the monks of nothingness were a continuation, in some sense, of their tradition, and it would seem they also had a little sense of humor, appreciating a good pun. Now, the Komuso were easy to spot in Edo Japan. According to the Kaido Honsoku, an early Komuso document from the city of Wakayama, dated 1628 of March, describes the Komuso dress code. Quote, oh, how mysterious is the basket that the Komo wears on his head? It is called the Tengai. Close quote. The document goes on to describe other aspects of their attire, along with their metaphoric correspondence. A sash, representing the entrance to the divine. A straw mat representing the five elements as well as time. A rope representing being and non-being, as well as a purse. A staff. A sword. And of course, the obligatory bamboo flute. On the screen you see a picture of an actor by Katsukawa Shunsho. The production year is 1792. It depicts Nakamura-za's early spring no play, Wakamurasaki Edoko Soga. The most recognizable aspect of the Komuso are the iconic Tengai, the upside down basket worn on the head to hide the identity of the player and also to shield the blowing edge of the shakuhachi from the wind. Continuing from the Kaido Honsoku, Quote, even more indispensable to the Komuso, however, is the Shakuhachi. Close quote. The Shakuhachi is the principal treasure of the Komo, and it represents the four seasons, symbolized by the four finger holes on the front. The single finger hole on the back expresses the clarity of the enlightened. The three bamboo nodes represent the unity of Buddhahood, practice, and mercy. The lower opening represents the womb realm, compassion, the upper opening, the diamond realm, truth, and the crescent-shaped mouthpiece above expresses the clarity of absolute reality. The shakuhachi is precious beyond limit. The hitoyogiri and the shakuhachi were enjoyed not just by monks, but also by samurai, who studied and appreciated Chinese philosophy and music theory. Twelve notes in an octave, twelve months in a year, twelve hours on a clock, 60 minutes in an hour, and 60 microtones or pitches between the conventional half-step and western music. 
The vibrations of a flute are a microcosm of the rotations of the earth and moon. The player seeks to play out the cosmic dance with his feet on the ground using bamboo and wind. That being said, it's not so strange that the Komuso would be walking around playing shakuhachi for some sort of priestly purpose. Many were masterless samurai, and perhaps some were Christians fleeing persecution as they claimed to their ruler's consternation that even the highest shogun had to answer to heaven for his actions. Whether people saw them as priests is a different story. Some may have used their anonymity for nefarious purposes, perhaps spying for government officials, but others likely stayed true to their stated objective. Their soulful sounds may have provided relief for some living in such an oppressive era, while other listeners almost certainly found the out-of-tune playing of some to be annoying at times. Traditional Japanese hats are called kasa. Kasa can refer to any style of Japanese woven straw hats or headwear. These hats were important signifiers of one's occupation in Edo period Japan. Kasa were made using natural materials such as bamboo, straw, wicker, and rush. Some kasa were even lacquered, making them water-resistant. A few examples of kasa would be the ronin gasa, a type of wicker hat made from shaven bamboo, worn by masterless samurai. The jingasa, a simple and iconic design that was commonly worn by samurai and ashigaru foot soldiers. Although these were often made using wicker or bamboo, some came to be made from metal or leather. The takahatsu gasa, a Buddhist medicant monk's hat. It is shaped kind of like a plump mushroom and extends about as far down as the end of the nose. And lastly, our featured hat, the tengai. The most unique feature of the tengai is that it covers the entire head. It is woven tightly around except for the eyes, making the wearer truly anonymous. Obviously, as we just showed, not all designs were known to cover the face, making the ones that do a bit more intriguing, begging the question of why would someone want to shield their identity. Both the Tengai and Ronin Gasa are two fine examples of this, giving both of these hats a pretty mysterious aura. To this, you may have seen either the Tengai or Ronin Gasa used in various other places, either in film or in games. I know at times that they have even been depicted to be worn by mysterious samurai taking part in brutal acts of Tsuchigiri, or crossroads killing, especially in the game Way of the Samurai 3. But specifically concerning the Tengai, in his book, Shakuhachi, Zen, the Fukeshu, and Komuso, James Sanford speaks further regarding them and their relationship to the Komuso. According to the rules of the late Tokugawa Fuke sect, the Komuso monk was never supposed to remove his tengai except within the precincts of a Fuke temple. If caught outside in a rainstorm, he was not to open an umbrella over the tengai. It is important to note as well that only Komuso were technically allowed to wear the Tengai, despite what you may have seen in other depictions. To wear one, you had to be a full-fledged member of the fraternity. Being caught wearing one without having the proper paperwork could mean punishment by the shogunate. However, this regulation did change after some time. Sanford continues, As time went on, the enforcement of this monopoly relaxed somewhat, and samurai traveling incognito took to wearing this type of headgear. It was eventually even affected by destitute warriors and their wives, who had been reduced to roadside begging. Sanford notes later in his work an example of a legal restriction being lifted. A famous kabuki play, called Kura, was staged in the early 1800s when members of the cast were required to wear Komuso Tengai. However, according to law, one cannot legally purchase one without membership to a Komuso temple. The producers of the play ended up going to a famous Komuso temple called Ichigetsu Dera, and paid them a deposit of 300 ryo, which was an absurd amount of money. Given these restrictions, the three seals, Shakuhachi, Sash, and Tengai, made it difficult for the average person to obtain them, making it easier to spot a fake Komuso. However, a person having all three of these seals would be considered a legitimate Komuso, and not merely a cosplaying criminal, with the Komuso having his Shakuhachi at the lips and his head covered with the Tengai. He remained relatively silent. It is said that the response of a komuso when asked where are you going was isho fuju, a four Chinese character idiom which means whatever way I go, or to the place of non-attachment. The spiritual symbolism of the tengai meant that one would let go of their identity, and more importantly, their ego. Riley Lee notes in his thesis, 
questions as to his name or identity were to be answered only with the name of his temple and his religious name. It can be deduced that most of the time, one would really only hear the Komuso's shakuhachi, his true voice. Speaking of music, let's talk a little bit about the music that they played, called Hong Kyoku. Hong Kyoku is built upon two Chinese characters, Hong, meaning true or original, and Kyoku, meaning musical piece, Hong Kyoku. The pieces that fall under the category of Koten, or classical Hong Kyoku, are the oldest pieces that are iterations of works performed or practiced by the Komuso themselves. Many popular resources state that the Komuso played their shakuhachi in these Hongkyoku pieces for enlightenment and alms beginning in the 13th century. However, there is no evidence that this was the case until the 1640s. The famous Kyotaku Denki, which details the history of the shakuhachi and its transmission, dates to around 1779, or possibly earlier, and researchers agree that this is most likely a fictional account created to give legitimacy to the Fuke Buddhist sect so that they could continue to operate under the government of the time. When the original sect was abolished in the 19th century, the Honkyoku pieces continued to be played in various forms, sometimes being edited for performance effect. They exist today as the Kinko, Shikuho, Myoan or Fuke, and other schools. The Tozan school was formed later and includes only modern pieces, some of which are played in other schools alongside Hongkyoku. The concept of Suizen, or meditative breathing, was first established by the 32nd director, Dodo Genkyo, of Myoanji. It was conceived of as a breath training practice employing the shakuhachi. In Japanese, this is called Suiteki Shugyo. It has gained popularity among shakuhachi players worldwide, but there is no historical evidence to support any komuso or komoso practicing suizen, or at least referring to their practice with that specific word. Ikkyu Sojun, a famous Zen monk, is also well known for his predilection for the shakuhachi, which can be seen in various poems. It is important to note that it was likely the Hitayugiri shakuhachi, as the komuso shakuhachi didn't exist until later on from Ikkyu's Crazy Cloud Anthology. The play of the shakuhachi even evokes feeling in ghosts. As a wanderer between heaven and earth, I am again without companion. In all things, there is only this melody. The man steps out of the painting into the flute from the Mulberry Island. Now, let's take a look at the societal positions of the Komuso by going to another primary source, the Hitori Mondo. The Tokugawa shogunate brought a period of stability to Japan, but at the cost of a degree of freedom. Christians, who had become problematic in Japan for several other reasons, but also recognizing a deity that transcends the power of the shogun and the emperor, were often brutally persecuted. Individuals were put into groups of five to ten people to keep each other in line, so it became difficult to speak your mind on issues that the government might have a strong position on. In this pre-modern society that often resembles ideas of feudalism, many aspects of life were regulated. Speech, travel, and especially religion. The Danka system was put into place where each person had to show proof that they belonged officially to a Buddhist temple. Again, this was in large part instituted to stamp out Christianity. In many cases, Buddhists sided with, or at least did not resist, the government and became complicit in enforcing the government's agenda. It should be noted here, though, however, that some truly compassionate individuals invited Christians into their temples as a refuge even allowing them to worship their god while escaping persecution. Needless to say, individual freedom was not a top priority to the Tokugawa shogunate. If shakuhachi medicants wanted to continue operating, they would have to find a way to convince the government to allow it. In order to gain the government's approval and to avoid being stamped out, they would have to convince the government that they would be cooperative. Since Zen Buddhists were already tied to the government, they provided a good fit. Since the time of the Hitoyogiri, its players, largely monks and samurai, had enjoyed Chinese philosophy and metaphysical rumination as a tasty side dish to their flute playing. Ancient Hitoyogiri manuals such as Shichiku Kokinshu, Hitoyogiri and Strings, Then and Now, and Sosadyu Shakuhachi, Tekazu, Mokuroku, mention Taoist ideas and draw heavily on Chinese music theory, with many pieces, noted as being composed by monks or samurai 
One Piece even makes reference to the Buddha's birthday. Thus, it's natural that Shakachi players would have liked the story of Priest Fuke, who appears in the record of Rinzai, a Tang Dynasty Zen master. He was just what a truth and freedom-loving person living in the oppressive Edo era would be longing for, iconoclastic and eccentric. He would go about speaking his mind without regard to how he was perceived, and breaking societal norms and manners. One story has him flipping over a table while dining at a patron's house. Another has him walking around eating raw vegetables, something that you don't do in China. Rinzai sees him and says, quote, just like a donkey. Fuke replies, hee haw. The Komoso have to convince the government that they are good, obedient Buddhists. So they make up a story about a man named Chohaku, who was a flute maker. Priest Fuke would always be walking through town, ringing a bell and chanting a poem to get people to wake up to the truth. Chohaku admired Fuke and tried to become a disciple, but Fuke wasn't interested. So instead, he started imitating the sound of Fuke's bell with his flute. Then he took on someone as a follower, and that person took on someone else, and so on until someone traveled to Japan and established the Fuke sect. One thing that has baffled many Shakuhachi players is, what is the sound of Fuke's bell? How are we supposed to mimic the sound of a bell with a flute? And who is this Fuke character? Hitori Mondo, a document written by Hisamatsu Fuyo, born 1791, died 1871, of the Kinko Ryu school, includes the following regarding Fuke. Question. What kind of person was Fuke Zenji? Answer. I do not know. Better ask someone with more knowledge of Zen. Question. Wasn't Fuke the ancestor of Shakuhachi? If one follows this path but doesn't know its origins, is that not a sign of immaturity? Answer. As for myself, because I understand the source of Shakuhachi, I say I do not know Fuke. Fuke was an enlightened man, but I do not think he sought his enlightenment by playing Shakuhachi. He cannot be compared to an ignorant blind person like me who plays Shakuhachi because he enjoys it and has gradually come to know the Shakuhachi is a Zen instrument. Even if Fuke has played Shakuhachi, it would only have been a passing fancy. His practice of Shakuhachi would not compare to my training for many years. If Fuke were to come alive again in this generation, he would surely become my disciple and ask me to show him the way. If you look at records from the time of Fuke, and if you know all about his life, but you do not know his enlightenment, then you do not know Fuke. On the other hand, a person who knows nothing of his life, but knows his enlightenment, he knows Fuke. I do not know him yet. The story of Priest Fuke appears in the Kyotaku Denki Kokujikai in 1779. This is nearly 1,000 years after the time that Chohaku, the supposed founder of Fuke Zen, would have lived. Chohaku never appears in any Chinese text, nor does the Fuke sect exist in Japan or China before that time. It appears to be a forgery, but since there was no easy way to corroborate it, perhaps it was able to fool the government officials in charge. More likely, it was simply overlooked. Perhaps this was because the government saw some advantage to having the Fuke sect exist. For example, they were both anonymous and unrestricted in their travels, which may have made them convenient servants. In Edo-era Japan, we can see all sorts of people. Some are fearful of losing control and seek to maintain it by force. Some comply with the government's oppressive philosophy, be it out of a desire to be on the winning side, whatever the cost, or simply out of fear. Others, such as the Buddhists who gave refuge to Christians, work secretly to do what they knew to be right. So what were the Komoso? Were they Zen sellouts, kissing up to the government to save their skin? Maybe. Or perhaps some of them are also making a subtle statement. Yes, government, we'll follow you, just like Fuke. You may be able to hold some sway over our speech, but at least our flute's sounds will be from our heart. So while it seems that the Komoso were philosophically inclined and used their flutes as a religious tool, there was no direct evidence that they were ever part of Zen Buddhism, aside from documents reprinted and revised after the fact. What makes researching the Komoso so difficult is finding primary sources to learn more about them. With the collapse of the Shogunate in 1868, many of the Komoso temples were burned down, so there are very few surviving documents, 
and many of those are recognized as forgeries. Here we are going to take a look at an oboe, or an edict, from 1678, year and bo 5, December 18th, titled Komuso Ha Oboe. Bakufu Memorandum of December 18th, 1678. Section 2.A. At the time of accepting or contracting with a new disciple, that person's background and identity must be certified and confirmed in formal writing by or by one or more witnesses before a final decision can be settled. Point B. Convicted and banished persons who have acted contrary to the fundamental laws must be arrested and taken prisoners or taken into custody. Point C. Even so more, the head temple must definitely and thoroughly so instruct that the etiquette or manners of the Komuso since times of old be ever increasingly observed and respected. Section 3. Point C. Outrageous behavior that is not in accordance with the underlying principles of the cosmos, according to Neo-Confucianism, is not acceptable. In general, laws and regulations are created to address extant issues, so one might assume these memoranda give us an idea of the problems they were dealing with in the era. The document is not unique. There are other edicts and regulations that state similar issues. However, the document is notated as belonging to the Komuso sects. Nowhere does it mention Zen or the Fuke sect. Only in a reprint of the document from 1880 does the Fuke sect appear in its attribution. So we can see that while the Komuso certainly existed, their connection with Zen was more one of informal interest combined with convenience than something of formal recognition or having basis in lineage. Or perhaps there were other factors involved as well. It was one of the first large works on Japanese music. William Malm claims that the Fuke sect was actually invented as a cover for Christians escaping persecution. Quote, when the Christian movement was halted by the slaughter of Shimabara in 1638, many of these ronin felt their entire class would fall victim to the paranoid vengeance of the shogun government. It is believed that one group of these desperate men formed a komuso group in Kyoto called the Fukeshu. They secretly purchased a building which was associated with one of the larger Buddhist temples in hopes that the shogun would not view their group as a Christian revival. This headquarters they named the Myowan Temple. In order to secure their position, the Fukeshu faked a number of papers claiming their historical origins as coming from China. From William P. Malm, Japanese Music and Musical Instruments, 1959, pages 153 to 154. This story fits the facts we know. Some early Christians were indeed samurai, educated in Confucian ethics, and admiring the qualities of steadfastness and self-sacrifice that they saw in the person of Christ. Displaced in the chaos of many years of war, and then suddenly facing extermination at the hands of the Tokugawa shogunate, they may well have sought cover as a made-up Zen sect of Komuso. Perhaps, as in cases mentioned above, some other non-Christian Komuso may well have seen the persecution as unjust and supported their Fuke Christian samurai companions in their time of need. Or, alternately, perhaps the Ronin samurai in general would have been considered guilty by association with the rebel uprising, consequently banding together to find refuge. This is not to say, of course, that all Komuso or Fuke Shakuhachi players were necessarily Christians. Just like Shakuhachi players today, the Komuso were likely comprised of a variety of types and personalities. Philosophers and poets who were genuinely seeking truth Christians seeking refuge while following Christ, some more musically talented, some drawn primarily to prayer and meditation, and perhaps some nefarious government spies thrown in the mix as well. Though in our modern era, the Komuson are known as members of a Zen sect called Hukeshu, the truth is much more nuanced. Various resources express a connection with Renzai Zen, but historical documents bear no witness to this connection whatsoever. According to Professor Yoshida Mitsukuni in his writing Zen and Shakuhachi from 1977, Zen to Shakuhachi, Kanke ga Zen Zen nai. There is absolutely no formal connection between Zen and Shakuhachi. The Fuke sect was created based on a fictional story, 
In addition to this, the concept of Suizen, blowing meditation, is also a somewhat misleading modern invention that began around 1950. Thorsten Olafsson, a Shakuhachi scholar, puts it this way. Sadly speaking, the history of Suizen misinformation began in 1974 with Kamisango Yuko's explanatory text for the Nippon Columbia gramophone record set titled Suizen, a misleading narrative that was subsequently adapted, translated to English, and uncritically spread by and among shakuhachi aficionados in the West ever after. The special term, or compound, Suizen, cannot be seen in Japanese writing nor elsewhere at all before the year 1950 at the earliest. It is therefore not just inappropriate and academically utterly meaningless, but also ethically improper and even bordering on fraud to postulate that the Edo period Komuso ever practiced Suizen, or even Shakuhachi meditation for that matter. Therefore, of course, using the term Suizen as some sort of explanation or proof that the Komuso ever employed the Shakuhachi flute for anything like Zen-inspired Zen-related meditation is completely unfounded. Truthful, historical, documentary evidence for anything like that simply does not exist. In spite of Thorsten's harsh but accurate words towards Suizen, this does not mean that the Komuso didn't have any spiritual or moral intentions behind their music, nor does it preclude the use of shakuhachi pieces as a sort of meditation, prayer, or self-cultivation. Going farther back to the pre-Edo days of the Hitayogiri shakuhachi, we can see a meditative posture taken toward the short, free-rhythm, haiku-like compositions of the classical repertoire. The player is urged to be fully present in the note being played, forgetting about what came before or what lies ahead. Again, as mentioned at the beginning of this video, the very nature of music at the time was seen to be one of bringing oneself and one's environment into harmony with the heavens. With wandering monks playing the instrument, its music was doubtless seen as a sort of spiritual exercise, rather than being simply a form of entertainment. Nevertheless, the Komuso's formal connection with Zen, or any other branch of Buddhism for that matter, is a fabrication, and possibly one created by Christians fleeing persecution. They weren't Zen priests, and their temples weren't even temples at least not in comparison to official temples of that period. According to Japanese shakuhachi scholar Makihara Ichido, quote, Originally the Komuso temples were places for masterless samurai to gather, ronin no tomariba. They neither conducted funerary services, nor did they have cemeteries, bochi mo nai, end quote. The latter sentence refers to two unique identifying factors of Japanese temples. Because of the Danka system, wherein all citizens must belong to a temple, every temple has a sizable graveyard, and much of their revenue comes from conducting funeral services and housing the deceased. For the Komuso temples, this was not the case. So what's the point? What does all this mean for shakuhachi players today? The common perception of Komuso as Zen priests walking around healing people through their Zen music is a myth, but like many myths, it's not entirely untrue. The Komuso were not really Zen priests, but as an association of wandering monks and masterless samurai, many of them would have been inclined to seek truth through their lifestyle and through their sounds. Their faith and spirituality was more varied ranging from Chinese philosophy to Buddhism and maybe even Christianity. And many, even the Christian samurai, would have had affinity for Zen concepts. Otherwise, why would they have chosen or even known about priest Fouquet for use in their made-up lineage? Though it's made up entirely after the fact, the term Suizen does capture an important aspect of ancient Hitayogiri and Shakuhachi music. Today, the most prominent music in our culture comes to us in the form of entertainment. While shakuhachi music was not seen specifically as Zen meditation, players did see it as a form of prayer or meditation. In the anxiety-ridden modern world, the presence of a form of music that finds truth and beauty in breath and simplicity is a much-needed blessing. Today, people use modern iterations of the ancient shakuhachi konkyoku for many reasons, 
ranging from meditation to musical performance and entertainment, and often being a mix of both to one degree or another. As an added bonus, people can play shakuhachi without having to serve a totalitarian government on the side, and Christians can play it without fear of being murdered. It's a good time to be alive. Do you have a love or fascination for Japanese history and culture like me? Then why not explore the roots of the Kumuso and Shakahachi Hankyoku through the flute's Muramachi-era predecessor, the Hitoyogiri? The two individuals who helped research and write this video are now accepting registration for a Hitoyogiri Shakuhachi course next year in the spring. The Hitoyogiri Shakuhachi was originally known simply as the Shakuhachi. It was supplanted during the Edo era by its larger descendant, the Shakuhachi we know today. The Hitoyogiri's solo repertoire is a collection of free rhythm pieces that are quite simple and comparable to haiku in their brevity, yet they contain a depth that can be refined and pursued over an entire lifetime. The pieces bring simple melodies to life, finding subtle variation in technique that change with the seasons. It is an instrument you can take with you anywhere, and it loves being played outside. In 1959, noting that the Hitoyogiri had become completely extinct, supplanted by what we know now as the Shakuhachi, William Mom said that, quote, it seems unlikely that the Hitoyogiri will ever come into general use again, close quote. We plan to change that. Join us in reviving the ancient melodies of Hitoyogiri, a product of many years of research and practice. The course will be conducted as a series of group lessons taking place weekly over a period of three months in spring 2024. We will meet every week for one hour lessons. There will be one morning class and one evening class in Japan time, both covering the same materials, so that everyone can attend one or the other depending on where they live. Each lesson will also be recorded and can be watched at a later time, in case you miss one or forget some of the materials mentioned in the course. Sign up and get yourself a Hitoyogiri today. Check out the links in the description. I want to thank Nick and Sean for their passion in helping to craft this video and dive deep into this fascinating topic. I highly recommend that you go check out these links to explore more about the Shakuhachi and their work. And with that said, thank you for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell if you enjoyed this video and found it to be most informative.